What's going on guys? Welcome to the Departures Capital live stream. It is Tuesday and we're going to give you guys a couple seconds just to join up the room and then we're going to get straight into things. I got a bunch of stuff. I got some viewer requested stocks. Okay, so being a trader can really Whoopsies. suck. Whoopsies. Okay. Give you guys a couple of minutes to join up this stream and then we'll get this show on the road. How's everybody doing today? Two people watching, what? What's up, The Loner? Thanks for tuning in. All right. John John, name's Bond, James Bond. What's up, Travis? All right, we're gonna be taking a look at a bunch of stuff in about two seconds. We're just gonna give a a few more minutes for some people to join the stream just so that I don't have to repeat myself a bunch of times. <laughs> How is everybody doing today? Thanks for those likes. Eight likes already. Only 20 people watching. Damn. So first we're going to check in on the cannabis stocks real quick and then we're going to get straight to, okay, throw some good ACB news out there and bring back the green. Yeah, I know we're seeing a little bit of a red day today. Not everything's in the in the red but we are seeing quite a few stocks in the red canopy is leading the way down that was pretty much a given i mean the stock ran like crazy i wouldn't say buy the pullback yet on canopy personally i just think it's gone up too far too fast so far so yeah cgc is finally selling off our alternative health tillery is down six percent Kiosk Beverages, this is a stock that I'm definitely looking at. I'm happy that it sold off again today. It's been uh, it's been selling off. I mean, it did have a really nice run from 30 to 36 cents. But yeah, we're seeing Kiosk Beverages pull back a bit. That's one on the watch list. Charlotte's Web, Namaste's down 5% again. T-God's pulling back. Aurora's down 3.7%. CGC when it goes back to 35 US. Yeah, we can take a look at the chart for Canopy real quick just to see where I would potentially, I wouldn't enter Canopy right now. It's just too expensive personally. But maybe like in the mid 50s, I'd start to take a position, but it's a tough one. I think Canopy's overbought. Yeah, I really think Canopy's just riding too high right now. They do have a lot of good news, but that doesn't matter when the stock's probably a bit too high right now. So we're seeing a little, quite a bit of red. 48 North pulling back a bit. Ceneva, I wanna see Ceneva in the low fours. Charting man Dan predicted the consolidation yesterday quite strongly. So we're going to be taking some viewer requests. I've got a list already, guys. And then we're going to go over a couple more. I'm just going to look at the rest of these. International Canada brands, flat. We bought some yesterday, but I was actually hoping for it to sell off into the 8 $0.09 cent range, but $0.10 cents might be the floor. We'll see what happens. FSD Pharma at $0.31. Cents. Strongly looking at FSD Pharma right now. It looks pretty cheap. Kush Bottles, Organogram, continuing that run. Wayland Group up 4%. We bought some Wayland yesterday, so it's nice to see it go up 4%. Got it for 120 something. What's up, Ryan? Thanks guys for tuning into my live stream. Anybody here who hasn't hit that like button, hit that like button and let's make this show grow. Valen Grow works up 6% Matic Enterprise and Pure Global Cannabis. The top performer of the day, up 8%. We still hold on to our Pure shares. So I believe Pure had some news today. I'm going to try and find it on New Cannabis Ventures. <clears throat> New Cannabis Ventures. Nope. Cura, California cannabis licenses have more than doubled since November. Green Growth Brands names, oh, no one cares about that stuff. 
All right, so let me just Google Pure Global Cannabis for you guys and get that news. Because I know there's some news out about Pure Global Cannabis. Here we go, four hours ago. Pure Global Cannabis to acquire Spark Cannabis Clinic and engages Hello MD to accelerate patient acquisition. <clears throat> Pure Global Cannabis blah, 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 is pleased to announce it has entered into a definitive agreement to purchase all of the outstanding shares of SPRQ Health Group Corp, a Brampton based clinic, cannabis clinic helping patients to obtain safe access to medical cannabis. Exchange approval. The transaction is expected to close on January 30th. Spark will operate as a wholly owned subsidiary of Pure. So Pure just bought. Preserved to the transaction, Pure will pay 100 grand at closing and issue 480,000 shares <coughs> of Spark. Blah, 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 blah. So investors are liking this. They're seeing it as a positive, I'm guessing, because they're growing their patient base with this acquisition. And now let's take a quick look at Pierce stock just to see what's happened since they got that sales license. So I'll be taking a look at the comments in two seconds, guys. I just want to look at this stock. So we're seeing Pure pick back up. Pure hit a low of about 13 cents. Then there was news about them getting their license. We always knew they were going to get their license. We just didn't know when. And then they sold off a bit. Now they... This is when they got their license. The stock skyrocketed up 46%. Traders took a bit of profit. Could we be heading for the next lift off and potentially head into the 30 cent level? That would be very nice. I'd love to see that. Like, sir. Like, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, G? Kappa? John John. POTN OTC News. They have CVS drugstores. Do you think ACB is going way down? Can't seem to hold 915. What's up, Mike? In terms of ACB, I think it's going to be dependent on the market. And then we'll have to see what happens with earnings. Hey, man, sold some ACB. 33 shares of BCAP. Hempco has good news. Tetra Biopharma. Okay, we're going to add Tetra, Bi Tetra Biopharma to the list. Oh, it's already on the list. So we're going to be doing live requests, viewer live requests in about... Five minutes, I just want to look at a couple more stocks. What's going on, Andrew? Thanks for tuning into my stream. Vitamin Shop says Shell looks like a buy. Says Sell looks like a buy. Patent just filed. You should definitely check out when you get some free time. Great time to buy with a great quarterly dividend. All right, Ryan, let me check that out. Be kept. I'm going to check it out right now. I love dividend stocks. Blue Knight Energy Partners, 17% dividend. What does this company do? Oh, Blue Knight Partners is a master limited partnership company. The company manages and operates through four segments. Asphalt ter Terminaling Services, Crude Oil Terminaling Services, Crude Oil Pipeline Services, and Crude Oil Trucking, and Producer Field Services. Interesting. I'd be a little bit concerned about the uh, stability of that dividend, but is it because the stock just dropped so much or what's going on with that? That would be my only concern. Did you buy the dip or you bought today? Yeah, the stock's down quite substantially, but as long as I have a stock like this, very similar, but in a different field, Cryus Energy Trust, they also pay a huge dividend. I'll show you it real quick. 15.7%. This is an energy company. They sell energy in America, like a, a utility service provider. But the stock also dropped like crazy. All right, so. Anyways, guys, I just want to talk a little bit about cannabis stocks, a little more about cannabis stocks, and then we're going to get into a few other things like viewer requests and stuff. So Pure Global is leading the way. We're not seeing much of a pullback. We're not seeing much of a pullback for a lot of these stocks that had a really big run. So hip. 
Let's have a look. Actually, this might be an interesting one. Damn, up 18%. I'm going to guess they're getting into CBDs. Stocks running like crazy today. What's the news about them? Announces CBD will be present for a second year at Super Bowl. Okay, so that'll cause some. That'll cause a little bit of publicity. If we can get on in this, get in on the Super Bowl. So there's a couple things I want to talk about in terms of the markets before we take some viewer requests. NFL. Just give me the pullback sometime. You remember December, right? What was the last one you recommended? This is one to watch. Be careful. Be careful with the stability of their dividend. Cryus Energy Trust. C-R-I-U-S Energy Trust. Just don't buy based on my what I say because this is not financial advice. Once again, I'm not telling you to buy the stock, but it's one to watch. So take a look, do your research about the company, and uh, that's all I can say about it. But we do own Cryos Energy Trust. We do own this stock. Just a little bit of info. So last thing. So I'll take this. I'll take this last question about Aurora Cannabis. What's a good entry point for Aurora Cannabis? Personally, I want it to go back down to eight bucks and then I would be more happy to buy it. What's up, Tom? Thank you for tuning into my stream. Appreciate everybody watching. Hit that like button, guys. 61, 63 people in the room, only 19 likes. Hit that like button, support my stream. Okay. So the talk of every day, the talk of every day is Aurora Cannabis and when's the best time to buy it. Uh, any Chinese stocks? Yep. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Chinese stocks. We'll talk about the stock markets. We'll talk about one sector that is on fire, has been on fire, and we're loving it right now. What's up, Mike? So, anyways, Aurora Cannabis, it's a tough one. Like I said, I want to buy at 8 bucks. Right now we're sitting at 904 I think we could drop a little bit more before earnings. And then it's hard to say after earnings because if we have good earnings, these stocks are going to explode. You saw what happened to Organogram as they announced a really good quarter. So there's potential that ACB's got some tricks in the bag. So it's, it's really going to come down to the next quarter, these next quarterly earnings reports. They're either going to drive or sink these stocks. But in the meantime, I could see ACB pull back a little bit until earnings. <clears throat> we'll see, guys. We'll see, but if ACB goes down to eight bucks, I'm buying. Otherwise, I'm holding. I'm not buying ACB over nine bucks right now. So, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, anyways, let me get back to what I was originally gonna talk about with the markets. American Premium Water, okay, so. Wow, 73 people, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the stream. I think you just gave me a boost of energy. So we saw the markets in the red for most of the day. NASDAQ still in the red, S&P flat, Dow up 0.38%. So more so, I wanted to talk about commodities, if this thing ever loads. <clears throat> We're seeing a nice day for commodities. We're seeing a really nice day for gold and silver. Again, gold's pushing 13.09. Silver's pushing almost 16 bucks an ounce. Yeah, Pierre is doing very well. It's nice to see Pierre going up. We did buy Pierre at 20 cents or 19 cents, I can't remember. So that was a pretty decent buy. Didn't take a huge position, but still bought it. Um, okay, so we're seeing crude rise 2.69% on Venezuela. There's some news out about that, but more so, I just wanna take a look at gold and then show you guys what's going on with some of the gold miners because I've been preaching this whole gold story for a long time and it's finally coming true all right so we're seeing Barrett gold first majestic endeavor silver wheat and precious metals Fortuna up 2.3 percent gold corp up 2 percent Alamos gold 1 percent Kinross we own every single stock in this portfolio except for Royal Nickel Corporation and Victoria Gold Corp so uh, <clears throat> it's looking pretty good. 
for gold today. It's looking pretty good for Barrick. I really love to see Barrick continue the run. Over the last over the last while, just taking a look at the charts for Barrick Gold. This is a stock we've been consistently buying. And let's just take a look here at the bigger charts. Come on. Barrick's been all over the place. Barrick's been a really expensive stock at one point. You know, it was in the 50s sold all the way down to the to like seven eight bucks back in late 2015 early 2016 then we pulled back up we were buying barrack at like 12 bucks we just bought barrack again at 15 bucks so barrack's actually one of those stocks <clears throat> one of the biggest gold producers and if this chart ever loads you can see that it's yielding 2.3 for a gold producer so that's pretty sweet any stock that you can get over two percent in the precious metal mining space I consider that a steal now another stock that's very similar to Barrick but I do like their business model a little bit more and their share price has done better wheat and precious metals so this stock yields 1.86 percent but they're a precious metal mining streaming company which means they have a business model similar to Oxley Cannabis where they just make agreements with different producers, buy their gold and silver, and then resell it. Obviously, they buy it at a cheaper price. So, anyways, we're going to read this article. And we're going to take a look at one more sector, which is the utility sector. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We just bought Oxley too, so I hope Oxley does very well. Don't get me wrong. Black Hills, Trans Alta. So we're seeing some utility codes in the green, some in the red. What's a good entry point for Christ Energy Trust? I just saw that question. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Go gold. Yes, Andrew Trapman. I totally agree. We are big gold bulls. So... <clears throat> what's a good entry point for Christ Energy Trust? It's hard to say. The stock's been very volatile, pretty unstable. They do pay a nice dividend, but I'm a little bit concerned about the future of that dividend. But if you look at the longer term charts, around five bucks, it's managed to around 470, 460 to five bucks might be worth taking a look at. I mean, the stock could sell down to 340, but it's tough right now. This whole decline was because they got into the solar business and then it didn't go well and they're tying up loose ends, wrapping up that whole deal with the solar business. So yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. I need Aurora to drop lower. Yes, I couldn't agree more. What do you think of PG&E up 16% the day after filing bankruptcy? Do you know the ticker symbol for that? <laughs> Please let me know the ticker symbol for that company if you... Uh... Hey Aaron, do you know about anything about beer? Let's see. Hill Street Beverage Company. No, but I'm actually looking for a bunch of these kind of companies. So thank you for that and I'm going to add that to the list. Let me just write that down for a quick sec. PCG. Like I said, guys, we're going to take a look at a bunch of viewer requested stocks. I'm trying to make these live streams a little more interesting and a little bit you know, more fun. So you guys want to tune in daily because I will take viewer requests. We'll take a look at the stocks together. We'll learn about new companies together and make money together. This is not the goal. Athabasco Oil Sands. Uh, oh, sorry. Alibaba Oil and Gas Company turned cannabis. Kind of cool how the asset's paying for construction. <clears throat> What's up? You and the Purchase Capital should do a collab. We were talking about that last night, so I'm totally up for it. Totally up for it. Okay, guys, sorry. Input on S-U-G-R. Sorry, one more stock. I just got to write that down. S-U-G-R. 
All right, so we're going to go through all of the lists. I'll just read you guys the list in two seconds, but I want to add beer beer first to my portfolio. We're going to take, take a look at Argonaut Gold, FUU, Fission 3.0 Corp, Tetra Biopharma, Vivo, Hut, HVT, Kushco, XPO Logistics, TRST, Pharmacelio, PCG, and SUGR. Goldman Sachs has a lot of money invested in ACB. There might be another pump before earnings. Yeah, it's hard to say. I just want to add that to the portfolio real quick. Now's your chance, guys, specifically <clears throat> beverage companies. If you have any more small cap beverage stocks that you want me to add to my portfolio, I would love some recommendations. I'm not the be all end all know it all cannabis guy. I know a fair bit about the industry, but I can learn from you guys too. So feel free to suggest those small cap beverage stocks and those small cap stocks that you guys think are going to be big winners for 2019. And I'll add them right now, but in the meantime, I'm going to add beer <clears throat> to the portfolio. So Hill Street Beverage Company. Perfect. So as you guys can see, we have a huge long list, bro. What happened to incorporating fitness in your channel? <laughs> um, that's an interesting question, Harmon. I still talk to my friend who is really, really, really into fitness. Wayland's already on the list. Um, and he's been, he's been busy. He's just been, I guess he's just been like too busy to start a channel, but I really want to get him in on this. So, you know, thank you so much. And I'm going to text him right now. I'm going to, I'm going to start with an interview about fitness, but do you guys think that that's something that you would want to listen to? Fitness interview, 1933 industries, TGIF. Perfect. I don't think I have that one. Put Wayland on the list twice. Sorry, bro. Can't do that. It's not going to work. Perfect. 1933 industries. If you guys have any more small cap stocks that you want me to add to my list to cover, this is the list that we cover every single day <coughs> in our market minute video. So it's grown a lot since we started and uh, a lot of it's thanks to you guys too. So keep on eye on it with the expansion near finished. Will do, sir. All right. So first off, we are going to get into um, our viewer requested stocks. So I guess anybody who is tuning in that requested these, thank you. And anybody who's not, I think Chum's. I think Chum's already on the list. Chum's right there. What's Delta Nine? As long as they're a cannabis company, I'll add them. Delta Airlines. No, I'm just kidding. If you know the ticker symbol for that, drop it. Drop it. But anyways, <coughs> we're getting into viewer requested stocks right now. We're not going to spend too, too, too much time on this, but we will be reviewing and taking a look at all these companies. Let me just close my, let me just close my tabs though, guys. I'm pretty uh, notorious for opening 50,000 tabs at the same time. So first stock we're taking a look at was requested yesterday, Argonaut, Argonaut Gold. Argonaut Gold. What do you think about, why don't we add bills to the list? That's a good one. It is a Canadian stock too. Thank you. I don't know. He's got backing from all his millionaire buddies, so but it looks like to be a pump and dump so far. Most IPOs, I mean, what this stock IPO'd at what, like three, almost four bucks, and now we're down to 250 already, so I don't know, guys. Nine, Delta Nine, oh. Delta Nine Cannabis, thank you. There's another, <clears throat> another cool company for us to take a look at. Woo, guys, Pure's on fire, up 10%. 26 and a half cents. Yeah, it was pretty predictable, Stephen. So 
First viewer requested stock. Anyways, guys, $1.70. Argonaut Gold. Let's take a look and see what their portfolio is. Engaged in gold mining, mine development, and mineral exploration activities at Gold Bearing Mineral Properties in North America. El Castillo. So San Antonio. Um... Uh, Okay, so North American Gold and Silver Company, 627 employees. They're going to be probably a pretty small company. $294 million market cap. 52 week range of a buck 18 to 266. So, as you guys can see, we are picking back up with the price of gold. But this might be an interesting one to look at. You know what? I'm actually going to add this to the list. So, AR. Ticker symbol AR for our precious metal mining portfolio. AR. Thanks for that recommendation or that request. FUU Fusion 3.0 Corp is our next stock that we're taking a look at. Uranium play. So this stock is down 12 cents. Holy smokes. The market cap's unavailable. It's a little bit concerning. Let's see. Oh, they don't even tell anything about the company. Definitely have to do more research about this company. Stock's been trading since 2015. Here, guys, we'll Google it real quick. 3.0 Corp. Fission 3.0 Corp. So I'm going to guess that they are a exploration tier is a uranium project generator and property bank with one of the most successful f f technical teams in the uranium sector is a uranium project generator. So they, they generate uranium projects. Okay. Pull up charts for LHS. Tim Kwong, Aguara Technologies Energy Storage Systems and has lots of partnerships. EGT.TO. <laughs> Thanks for the recommendations, guys. So many stocks. Next one on the list is Tetra Bio Pharma. Tetra. Tetra Bio Pharma. Here's a cannabis stock for you guys. So many stocks, guys. <clears throat> Northern Dynasty Minerals. All right, Tetra Biopharma. 87 cents. Let's read about the profile of the company for anybody new tuning in who doesn't know about Tetra Biopharma. Is a Canada-based company engaged in the development of biopharmaceuticals and natural health products containing cannabis and other medical plant-based elements. The company is focused on combining the traditional method methods of medical cannabis use with supporting scientific validation and key safety data required for inclusion into the existing biopharma industry. So basically, the company's objective is to bring smokable natural medical marijuana to the market along with a number of other products targeting chronic pain, insomnia, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, among others three divisions so that's pretty cool supreme cannabis we can take a look at that later smokable palette in its phase three clinical trial which is supposed to go through any week now potential for the first insurable din smokable cannabis drug that's pretty cool so okay guys let's take a look at the size of the company where we're sitting right now it's 52 week range 52 week range of 59 cents to a buck 54. $146 million market cap. The stock hasn't seen too big of a run recently, which makes me like it. But I mean, it's it looks like a pretty <clears throat> looks like a pretty stable growth chart, and it seems to um, it seems to love this pattern of spiking and then selling off, spiking and selling off, spiking and selling off, spiking and selling off. So looks like we're due for a run for Tetra Biopharma. That's actually one that I will highlight because I like the chart. Vivo Cannabis is our next pick, is our next viewer request. 
So let's take a look at Vivo. They just invested over seven million a month ago. So Vivo's under a dollar now, down to 94 cents. $277 million market cap, 52 week range of 57 cents to $3.39. I didn't know about the Aurora products thing. I mean, I've heard a little bit of, I heard a little bit of people talking some smack about Aurora products, but I've personally never tried them. Maybe it's a good idea that I try the product of the company that I always talk about. <laughs> Acreage. And then MedMen. I don't know if you guys know about what happened with MedMen, but MedMen unlocked a ton of shares and they announced it on a Friday, which a lot of people were pissed off about. I bought them both and Aurora can honestly say Tweed 420 is awful. <laughs> okay. So guys, back to Vivo Cannabis. Love to get distracted with comments. Vivo Cannabis, formerly Abcan Group, Global Corp is a Canada-based company engaged in the alternative med medicine sector. The company's portfolio includes the following brands, Beacon Medical, a standardized pharma-grade cannabis, Fireside Cannabis, tailored to the social user, as well as Lumina Wellness, a wellness-focused cannabis product line. The company holds production and sales licenses from Health Canada, and it operates an indoor facility in Napani, Ontario, Canada. What's up, Max? FSD is flat today, buddy. I want to look at their site real quick. I just want to go over what they select my region. Let's go with none of it. Yes, I'm 19. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, I'm 19. Okay. Vivo Cannabis. Vertically integrated cannabis business focused on providing products and services to help people better their lives. Where is their presentation? All right. Let's see this in real time. Let's see what Vivo's got their new investors to offer. So if I was a new investor and I was looking to invest in Vivo Cannabis, this is the first thing I would see. So let's see how the company presents themselves. Well positioned for growth, a healthy balance sheet with the following capital allocation priorities. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Domestic adult use, domestic medical use, international sales. Okay, 50% is coming from international sales. That's pretty cool. So 50% domestic, 50% international, Europe and Australia. Growth strategy, premium product quality and cost efficient cost structure, promotion and branding, blah, 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 blah. Don't care about their leadership team, although it is important. I just don't want to read that right now. So one plus one equals three. They don't got their math down right. <laughs> just kidding. Canna Farms acquisition, 15,000 medical patients. <clears throat> cool. Uh, see you, Tom. Let's collaborate soon. Greet. Great people and proprietary insights tar target un unmet needs and <laughs> unmet, <laughs> unmet needs and stronger branding positioning. Blah 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 blah. I just want to see what their production facility looks like. Okay, here we go. Annual funded capacity of fifty-seven thousand kilograms with multiple supply agreements. So Vivo's got fifty-seven thousand kgs. Q1 2019, they're going to be making eleven thousand kgs and. And then 57,000 kgs by mid-2020. So, all right. So, they've got some decent facilities. What sets Vivo apart? Customer insights, innovative development, quality products, focused execution, profitable growth. Wow, that's so inspirational, guys. <coughs> all right, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's take a look at the chi market cap for Vivo. 
277 million dollar market cap 277 million dollar market cap let's um let's pull up the calculator real quick so let's say aurora's got an eight billion dollar market cap so 28 so 28 so 57,000 times 28 wow vivo is pretty cheap right now guys because if you factor the fact that ACB produces about 500,000 kgs expected, Vivo produces 57,000. ACB is worth 28 times more than Vivo. You're getting a decent amount of production capacity for 277 million. So, Sandy Roberts, hello, happy new year. Do you think I should sell, sell Kronos? Wow, uh, well, Sandy. What, what I usually say is, don't take this as financial advice, but if you're up more than 100%, it's usually, an, it's usually not a bad idea to take some profits. Personally, I would be taking profits on Kronos, but I'm not telling you to buy or sell. I would take profits on Kronos at this point. <laughs> Holy smokes. If you held Kron from the whole way up, jeez. Yeah, yeah, dump all your money into Kronos at 24. No, 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 I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I would take that stock to the bank. I'd sell my Kron position and go on vacation. And send Mr. Gornsteinberger an email, whatever the CEO's name is. Michael Gornsteinberger. <laughs> but one thing, uh, I think he's good at I think he's good at business, so that's why Altria invested them. They probably just got along. They're probably just buddies. Anyways, next stock we're taking a look at. Sorry to get off topic, guys. HVT. <laughs> Is that what we're... Oh, Harvest One Cannabis. Who needs to do their own research when I can just take your advice then if I lose my money, blame it on you. That's a terrible idea. It's a terrible, terrible idea. I always say this is not financial advice and I have disclaimer in every single video so don't blame it on me. Read the disclaimer and don't take my word for it. Chrono stock is higher than Cheech on a good day. <laughs> oh, Sorry guys, my neck killing me. Hit that like button. Anybody new to the stream, I'm getting excited guys. We're almost at 100 people so thank you. Let's keep going. So Harvest One Cannabis, this is the next stock we're taking a look at. And I'm going to the website, Harvest One Cannabis. But first, $140 million market cap, 52 week range of 30 cents to a buck 70. Currently we're at 76 cents. And the chart is looking pretty good. Looking pretty cheap still, Harvest One Cannabis. So let's just read about their, um, sorry, company overview. For anybody who knows a lot about these stocks, I apologize if this is like repetitive, but I just want like all the viewers to learn about these companies. Learn together if you, uh, yeah, always do your research. Always, always, always do your due diligence. Harvest One Cannabis, formerly Harvest One Capital, is a cannabis company which controls operations across the cannabis value chain through three business units. The company serves as the umbrella company over horticultural arm, United Greeneries and medical arm, staff of farm AG. Each business is strategically located with supportive regulatory framework in place. Blah, blah, blah. Let's listen to their investor presentation. Presentation. Doing your own research is a major key. Of course it is, but I mean, at the end of the day, I put a disclaimer in every video, so, and I talk about a disclaimer, so we're looking at Harvest One today, guys. <clears throat> like I said, if you know more about this company, feel free to drop me a comment as I'm reviewing it. I'll read your comment. I'll talk about the news. Feel free to drop me a link, but let me know if you drop the link, because it'll probably get blocked, so I can allow it. 
this is for anybody who wants to learn about these companies who doesn't know much and I'm learning to myself. So Harvest One Cannabis, a global house of brands. What Dream Water, Burb, Stat Stata Farm <coughs> and United Greeneries. Harvest One is a global cannabis company that develops and provides innovative lifestyle and wellness products to consumers in regulated markets across the world. The company's range of lifestyle solutions is designed to improve quality life of customers. Blah 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 blah. Global footprint. North America, available in over 30,000 locations, Israel, Australia, and Europe. Okay, cool. Duncan facility, 16,000 square feet production. <laughs> so 1,000 kgs of annual production capacity, that's not much. Um, 3,000 kgs. Is that the size of their greenhouse? This is like the size of Aurora Sky's washroom. Probably. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go, guys. Lucky Lake facility. So 8,000 to 10,000 kgs um, of production capacity. So we're looking at 4,000 plus 8 to 10, so 14. Outdoor growing. It's hard to say about outdoor growing 398 acres of prime agricultural land in a unique location. Doesn't say much about um, what they're going to do with that and that the land's obviously not even close to being ready. So <clears throat> advancing site preparation for 2019 growing season. Okay. They've got Nespresso, Nespresso cups. That's exciting. Stata Farm. Okay, so they're getting into the higher margin products. That's interesting. Clinical trials. You see, these are the kind of products that I do like to see. Proposed product pipeline. Soft gels, oils, inhalational pen, rapid oil spray, topical creams. These are the kind of products that I think are going to make these companies profitable. But this is just their proposed product pipeline. Dream water. This is a cool thing. I mean, CBD CBD is an all-natural liquid sleep shot and sleep powder, which helps promote relaxation and restful sleep. I'm going to assume that they're CBDs. Da, 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 da. Okay. Potential product pipeline. CBD infused water. I like this kind of stuff. I like these higher margin products rather than just dried flour because these are the things that are going to make money and they have higher margins. Burb. Customer friendly design. What is this? Okay. 71 million at the time of this presentation. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. They've got a bunch of financials in here. Feel free to take a look. To be honest, their investor presentation, whoever designed this PowerPoint, it's not really that exciting. So 14,000 14, <coughs> kgs per year of proposed almost production capacity. So not too high, but it's not always about how much cannabis they're making. It's about what they're doing with it. So $140 million market cap. Now, Vivo's got 57,000 kgs of production capacity, but Harvest One, I like their branding and I like their idea of higher margin products. So that's kind of cool. Harvest One's definitely one to take a look at. Rapid Oral Spray. North Bud Farms in Quebec, building on a 95-acre property that is supposed to be powered by a hydro dam, which will bring their costs really low. Those types of products can go mainstream for sure. So, honestly, guys, I think, like, if a company has a good product, and uh, it's a good high-margin product, and it's a successful brand, I think it's not so always so much about the production capacity. They'll find a way to get the CBD. They'll find a way to get the cannabis and scale production of those products. So this is definitely a, an interesting one. It's a small cap play. Harvest one, I give a thumbs up. Vivo, 
I give a thumbs up. Yes. Yes. The plan is to grow outdoor for extraction purposes. BC is deaf the place to grow outdoor. I think so. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Next stock we're taking a look at is Kushko. Kush oh shoot. Why do I always confuse these? It's not Kush bottles. Can't even spell Kush. What's the ticker symbol for Kushko? <laughs> Sorry guys, we're running into some technical difficulties. <laughs> Kushko. Jeez. KSHB. Fastest growing industry through our diverse. Uh, da, 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 da. Investor relations. Where's the investor relations presentation? There we go. Got a nice, beautiful picture of Shanghai. KSHB. I thought it wasn't that. KSHB. That's Kush Bottles. I thought these were two different companies. Kushko Holdings. Blah, blah, blah. U.S. cannabis industry economic impact. Retail cannabis sales are expected to reach over 20 billion by 2020. You like the background music? It is a site that's called Free Vlog Music No Copyright. Uploads from Vlog No Copyright. What do you think of Zanabas? Zanabas just released their investors doc. I'll take a look in a second. All right, guys, Kushko, public opinion tailwinds. Public support behind legalization continues to rise, fueled by reducing negative sentiment against the industry as well as the medical aspect of the sector. Vertical integration, growers, processors, brand owners, producers, distribution, dispensaries. This is a whole bunch of crap about the industry. Kushko Holdings is a publicly traded company operating several businesses that serve the cannabis marketplace. Our core business is Kush Supply Co., leading B2B ancillary provider in the cannabis industry. The company operates in the U.S. and Canada. 225 employees, growers, processors, brand owners, distribution dispensaries. <clears throat> okay. Let's see what they have. Kush Holding Company Structure, Kush Co. Holdings. The parent company to a diverse group of businesses, units that are transformative leaders in the cannabis, CBD, and other related industries. Product and innovations, packaging supplies and vape hardware, hydrocarbon and solvents, premier cannabis creative, creative agency. All right. So we've got an office in Toronto, Ningbo, China. That's pretty cool. Oregon. Hawaii, Puerto Rico, UK, Vegas. You know, I bet you the uh, office in China is to make the supplies, like the packaging and stuff like that. China's pretty famous for making the packaging. So, <laughs> yes, it's illegal in China. Provides necessary products for cannabis businesses, B2B model sources, products domestically and abroad. Pre-roll tubes. That's pretty cool. I mean, packaging is a big part of the industry. So, I definitely like what they're up to. Vape pens, Kush, en Kush Energy, hydrocarbons. That's pretty interesting. Natural products. Hey guys, look at it. Anyone who's from Toronto knows this building. Two senior executives hired in July as FTEs and now lead to our activities in the market. Blah, 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 blah. Full spectrum creative agency. All right, guys, looks all right. Looks all right for Kushko. Got a decent investor presentation. 52 week range of 376 to $7.20. Um, up seven or sorry, seven four hundred seventy-six 
Excuse me, million dollar market cap. So we're right in the middle of our range. Thoughts on Kushko? Thoughts on Kushko, my thoughts are neutral. I give it, I give it a sideways hand signal. All right, next stock on the list. No, mister, I'm illegal. <coughs> I read something like 55% of customers prefer cards, carts over regular oil and flour. XPO Logistics. So we've got a couple more stocks, guys, on the list. Then we're going to have to wrap up this stream. How long has it been? I feel like it's been, uh, holy, it's been 50 minutes. Okay. XPO Logistics, $60 a share, $7.2 billion market cap. What do they do? Give me a sec. Global provider of supply, supply chain solutions. Transportation and logistics. So they're a trucking company. Let's see. Uh, no dividend. It's not what I like to see. Let's see, let's see. Wow, the stock is down substantially. Sold all the way down to 43. Could be interesting. I give XPO Logistics a thumbs up for value. <coughs> Can trust, we're gonna skip. We know what's going on with CanTrust. Pharma C I E L O P C L O Wow. What's going on here, guys? That's interesting. So this stock's trading at nine bucks with a not available market cap. Okay, I need to do more research about this. There's no time for that one. <clears throat> we give this stock a question mark. PCG is our next stock on the list. What's up, Moses? Pacific Gas and Electric Co. No dividend. What? Pacific Gas and Electric Co. I believe this is the stock that got into trouble after they accidentally started the wildfires in California. <coughs> We're up 14% today, but holy smokes. Where's the news about this company? Pacific Gas and Electric. Wall Street flat, blah, 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 blah. pg and files for bankruptcy while facing billions in fire damages. So that's kind of strange. A series of devastating wildfires that killed more than 100 people and scorched hundreds of thousands of acres in California over the course of two years just brought one of the nation's largest utility companies to its knees. So Pacific Gas and Electric. All right. So that's one thing I really want to look at. I want to see if XLU is actually holding this stock. Where are their holdings? Come on. Let's see their holdings. I don't like this website. <clears throat> it's not giving me what I want. And it won't go back. What a piece of crap. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, guys. New, next era, Dominion Southern. Uh, <coughs> Maybe see. I would assume that they hold P. No, they don't. All right, so XLU is in the clear. <coughs> Alrighty. So PG, PCG, they get a cautious exclamation mark. Sugar, sugar, 
SCGR. I don't know if that was for Canadian or American, but we're going to take a look at Sugar Re Relentless Resources Limited. Relentless Resources Limited. Most MJ stocks are bleeding this morning. What the heck? Gonna buy some 48 North. Sugar Bud Craft Growers, formerly Relentless Cannabis Company engaged in alternative medicine. Okay, cool. So, Relentless Resources Limited. They have a $30 million market cap, 52 week range of $0.05 cents to $0.24. Cents. Currently, they're sitting at $0.8.5 cents with 354 million shares outstanding. Let's take a quick look at the uh, investor presentation. Relentless. That's not even the right name. Sugar Bud Craft Growers. <clears throat> Alright, sweet. Nice WordPress website. Ultra premium sugar, but is an emerging Alberta based probably trade cannabis company focused on growing, blah 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 blah. Where is their production capacity? Share price of eight cents. Blah blah blah. Massive greenhouses. They're focused smaller grow rooms, aeroponics, and top strains. All right, guys, what's your production capacity? 26 grams per year annual production capacity. Just kidding. Build out. So they've got the walls up. Here we go. 9,000 kgs. That's not too bad. I mean, 9,000 kgs is almost the same as Harvest One. 14,000 kgs producted, three layers, dried flour of 14,003. But by when? When is it supposed to be finished? Okay. All right, so. Not too bad. I mean, for what they have in the pipeline, it looks pretty good at $30 million market cap. Relentless Resources gets a thumbs up. We'll add that to the list. S-U-G-R. We're going to put a little dollar sign in front of that. Okay. We talked about bills. That one is uh, overvalued. We're going to cross out bills. EGT, EGT, Iguana Technologies. I'll answer your comments in about two seconds. This song's so cheesy. Okay. Iguana Technologies, let's see what they're up to. Oh, doesn't say anything about the company. All right, let's check in on the comments, guys. ACB trying to get back some losses on the day. They said the judge may reject bankruptcy claim. That'd be pretty cool. What's with the boring packaging from Canadian weed? It's all about the laws. There's law against... Uh, I, I just went to this cannabis influencer conference in Toronto, and they were talking about how limited the branding is on the packaging for marijuana products in Canada. The company only has like this tiny little section to actually put their brand or logo because they want to make it fair. You know how Canada is. Everything has to be, everything has to be fair. Everything has to be by re regulated, over-regulated. They're too solvent, therefore can't declare bankruptcy. Sad thing, I was only bought four shares. Charlotte's Web has been doing awesome. ISIL, very interesting. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a quick look at this. If I like what the profile is, maybe I'll do some more research. Cannabis company which designs and manufactures power control solutions for grid interactive energy storage systems. Okay, they support the power grid, no dividend. Stock's been around for for a while. Holy crap, this stock's pretty old. 
19 cents, I don't know. Needs more research. We'll put a question mark beside that. Last talk I'm talking about is MedMen. And then I'm all talked out. What? That's not right. Okay, MedMen's down 3.55%. What's your take on MedMen, guys? I know that MedMen released uh, a bunch of its shares, or they unlocked a bunch of their shares, so some people weren't happy about that. But honestly, I think MedMen around these levels, I think it could sell a little bit more, but I kind of want to buy MedMen at four bucks. Four bucks Canadian, that is. I do kind of feel like this stock's got room to run. So last but not last but not least, guys, we are going to recap the sector again, and then I'm out of here because I want to have some relaxation time. What's going on with this thing? Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, I think MedMen is at very decent price right now. The charts are looking. The charts are looking stable. Very stable for MedMen. Is MedMen on this list? Should be. Where is it? MedMen Enterprises. Let's add the Canadian ticker. There we go. Pure Global up 10%. What I like to see. Valen Grow Works, Matic Enterprises, Wayland's up 4%. Cush Bottles. It's our biggest decliners on the day. Hill Street Beverage, Ignite Brands, Tiga down 7.92%, Canopy Delta 9, Namaste down 6%. <laughs> Call of Duty time. <laughs> it sounds great. I wish I could play Call of Duty right now, but I've got too many things to do. Aurora Cannabis down 3.41%. Still waiting for you to drop past, past 8 bucks. Just go to 8 bucks ACB as much as I love you. I need you to go lower so I can buy more of you. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you liked the uh, interactive viewer request. So what I'm going to do is, for anybody who's still tuning in, hit that like button first off. We're at 69 likes. Oh, we, we almost got as many people liking as we have watching, so that's pretty cool. Um, so, feel free to request. Feel free to request uh, some stocks right now, and what I'll do is tomorrow I'm going to live stream at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, I'm going to start to write down all the stocks that you guys want me to look at tomorrow live at 10 a.m. Okay, Zanabis is number one. Zanabis, that's the first stock we'll look at. Sup? So, oh, hey. What's up? What's up, Claudia? You're going to request a stock for me to look at? <laughs> Acreage Holdings, okay. Acreage Holdings, Chiron, Chiron's been one stock that a lot of people have asked me about. No problem, Joey. There's no such thing as a stupid question because the only way you learn is if you ask questions. So don't be shy. Um, yeah, yeah, so we've got three stock requests so far. Synabis, Acreage Holdings, Chiron. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes just to request a few stocks and then I'm out of here. Any other companies that you want me to take a look at? Evenco. Evenco. There's actually uh, one stock that I want to reevaluate. New Strike Brands. New Strike Brands. Sprout, we'll take a look at Sproutly. Lee. 
So mining.com N O T There was this one gold mining company that I wanted to take a look at. I just can't remember the name. It starts with an A. I am gold, that's one of them. I am gold. <laughs> We love non-cannabis stocks. Don't forget, cannabis growth, growth rogue, NVSIV, NVSIV. Don't be shy to invest non-cannabis, don't, don't be shy to suggest non-cannabis stocks because um, cannabis is barely 20% of our portfolio. There we go, guys. Really need to check out ISOL. ISOL. Any thoughts on pharma? Tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 a.m. C I E L O. Slack. Slack IPO. I'm not much for tech IPOs in this environment. I feel like tech is on its way sideways or out or down a bit. <laughs> I'm just not a big tech investor. Honestly, I think that there's there's still lots of opportunities, but I'm just not a big tech investor. RML. Lexara Bioscience, LXRP. Thank you guys. What am I having for supper? <laughs> Haven't decided yet. So that's it, guys. We've got a ton of we got a ton of uh, suggestions. AI stocks. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We've got more likes than we do people watching. So that's what I like to see. If you have more requests and you tuned in not live, drop me some comments. Um, and then I will review those tomorrow at 10. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Feel free to tune in, guys. And we will have the live stream schedule. So we're going to be scheduling our live streams now. Not scheduling them on YouTube, but they're on our website you will see our schedule for live streams. Let me just go to the website real quick. So www.purchasecapital.com and we're going to have our schedule up here in the top two corners. So we're going to do Sunday live streams and we're going to do uh, weekly live streams either at 10 a.m. or between 1 and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, anybody who hasn't thought about or has thought about but hasn't signed up for our VIP trader report feel free to check it out I haven't talked about it in a while haven't sold it in a while but we're always looking for new members and it's only growing so once again thanks guys that's pretty much it drop me some comments at the end of this stream if you tuned in when it wasn't live or you for thought you forgot something and I'll add it to the list and we'll take a look at 10 a.m. tomorrow so that's it guys see you tomorrow